2 o'clock. My name is Rob Altamont, VP of Marketing for Herico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Herico webinar titled The Basics of Shaft Abrasion. The webinar will be led by Herico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making, and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. A few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, so we can't hear you. And if you have any questions, use the question box located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If you must leave the webinar, don't worry about it. It's being recorded, and it will be on youtube.com slash ricogolf and on our blog in about one hour. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our shaft guru, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob, and thank all of you for attending today's webinar. In our last webinar, we uh, discussed how to properly cut steel and graphite shafts using numerous tools that were readily available. Now we're on to our next step in the assembly process, which is shaft abrasion. This stage is very similar to cutting shafts as there are both manual and motorized methods to accomplish our goal, which is preparing the shaft for a good and hopefully long-lasting epoxy bond. To bond the shaft and the club head together, high-strength epoxies are required. And for the epoxy to secure the shaft tip to the club head, the chrome plating on steel shafts or the paint and polyurethane coating on graphite and composite shafts must be adequately uh, prepared. If not, you're going to have a surface that's going to be too smooth, which greatly increases the risk that the head could come flying off the shaft. You should be aware that as a club maker, you're responsible for what you build or repair. So it's important that you do all you can do to ensure that the club will stay intact. And failure to do so can result in someone getting injured and that somebody uh, coming back to you for some sort of restitution. Now the proper amount of shaft tip abrasion which is necessary for the adhesion is awesome. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. On the opposite extreme, too much abrasion could lead to premature breakage. So there's a correct amount of abrasion, which is e easy to understand once you uh, follow the right procedures, which I'm about to explain. The only time a shaft does not need to be tip abraded is in the case with over-the-hosel installations like some putter assemblies. Even in those cases, the stem of the club head that's to be fitted inside the uh, shaft still needs to be abraded for the proper adhesion. Following, I'd like to discuss the acceptable methods of shaft abrasion, as well as the pros and cons with the various types of shaft materials. By far the least expensive, but at the same time the most time-consuming method of shaft tip abrading involves hand sanding with strips of sandpaper. For steel shafts, you want to secure the shaft in a vice clamp, in your, vice, in your, in your bench vice. And just tear off one inch wide strips of 80 grit uh, cloth backed sandpaper uh, to braid the tip of the shaft. And one hand holding each end of the sandpaper, just going back and forth motion on the shaft tip, much like you were uh, going to shine your shoes. Hence the, uh, the name, which is the shoe shine method. This is the best, best method I've found to uh, ensure a nice, even shaft abrasion. As, as we will sh uh, see later, all the shine uh, on the chrome should be removed, and it should look like the shaft tip has a coarse, brushed uh, finish afterwards. If you don't have 80-grit uh, sandpaper, you can also use 100 or 120-grit. However, realize these are not as coarse, and while these may, may work, not only will it take more time to properly roughen the surface, it will require more strips of sandpaper as they will wear out quicker. You also need to rotate the shaft several times and inspect the degree of roughness 
um, is even around the full circumference of the shaft tip. And one tip uh, you might want to employ before you ever start is to put a mark on the shaft tip with a, a Sharpie pen or run a piece of masking tape around the shaft for the portion that you um, want uh, abraded. And typically for a club that will require a ferrule, you'll want to abrade the full length of the shaft um, that's going to be inserted into the hosel plus one half the length of the ferrule that you're going to be using. For heads that don't require a ferrule, like most putter shafts, or, or uh, yeah, putter shafts, mask the shaft very carefully. Um, and then by braiding the chrome on the steel shaft, uh, it won't be exposed to the rusting and eventual breakage uh, if it goes up above the top of the hosel. And that's not even uh, to mention uh, that it's going to be cosmetically unacceptable and look unprofessional. Because the chrome plating on a, a, a on the shaft tip is more difficult to braid evenly, hand sanding is not necessarily the best method for uh, for preparing steel shafts, but still adequate if that's all you have access to. However, hand sanding is a perfectly acceptable way to braid graphite or composite shafts. Now, it's recommended to use a little bit less coarse sandpaper on, on the graphite shafts, like 120 or 150 grit, uh, which will sufficiently cut through the paint and polyurethane on the shaft tip. And you're going to use the same shoe shine method I mentioned before. Now, this part is very important. You want to only remove the protective polyurethane and paint coatings until you've reached the bare shaft. Be careful not to 